And I want to talk about three things that we have underway at Target that are really trying to help shape what a content culture needs to look like. One is really understanding the business we're serving, the guests we're serving, and the channel we're talking about. One is the, is the internal team organizational alignment capability building part. And the third is uh, what I refer to as a talent API or marketing API, which is really this idea that we have to open ourselves up to the world and it's not all about us anymore. Many companies, Target included, have been a company that really built it ourselves and being really comfortable now that there is somebody better than us somewhere in the world that knows how to do it faster and being ready to tap into that. So, guest, channel, message, role, basic stuff, but I'm gonna give you just a couple different examples that illustrate this point for us. And the first one I wanna talk about is uh, something called a bullseye you. So, the back to college business for Target, just like back to school, is obviously an enormous business. And so we think about how do we connect with a millennial guest, a college student, so they feel deeply connected to Target, in love with the brand, independent of their parents, right? Because we know mom and dad take you college shopping, but we need to build loyalty for that guest way beyond mom and dad buying. So we're always experimenting with different ways to create content to connect with that guest. And one of the shifts we're making is we've been great at, at live events. And the problem with our events has been they were one place, one night, one moment in time, one audience. Usually extraordinary, but not something that people could participate in. So increasingly, you'll see us use an event as the springboard for content creation, which becomes the springboard for distributing that content in all of our channels. The little video you saw was we set up live dorm rooms. We hired five students. Uh, they called themselves celebrities, uh, which is difficult to say. And they lived in the dorm room and broadcast live 24 hours a day about their experience with Target products. Their dorm rooms, their food, everything they did really came from Target. And they talked about that experience. From an engagement standpoint, here's what we learned. So we had 300,000 visitors to the site. 1.8 million views of these uh, celebrity videos, 170 million PR impressions, 90 million social impressions, and people spent on average 11 and a half minutes at this site, which is either frightening or remarkable. <laughs> and if you, if you saw it, you would say it's probably somewhere in between. But thinking about spending time interacting with college students in their dorm room who are basically telling you stories about shopping and buying at Target. This site had the ability to transact. And so here's just a screen grab from the video where inside the dorm room, different products from Target were pinned and those pins on rollover became active and you could add those to your shopping cart and buy. That didn't work. And so one of the things that, that we're really thinking about is we've now been experimenting with lots of ways to, um, to leverage video and the web for deeper engagement. Last year during our fall style campaign, we did something called Falling For You, which was shoppable video. Incredible engagement, very little commerce. And so we're still actively trying to figure out how do we streamline this path to purchase? QR codes, text to buy, NFC, shoppable video, lots of experimenting with different kinds of technology, but we still haven't ha had the breakthrough yet to get the, the commerce to equate with the engagement.